So this is the Biden executive order on competition, right? And you're right. I mean, mainstream media pays zero attention to this, right? <clears throat> but I, when I read through this thing, I'm like, okay, Section 5, Further Agency Responsibilities, under 5H, and I've highlighted it. This is literally what the language says, right? Address persistent recurrent practices that inhibit competition. The chair of the FTC, that would be Lena Khan, right? is also encouraged. And I always thought it's funny, like whenever there's an executive, it's like encouraged to like that. It's not an encouragement. Like This is the president speaking. This is an order. It's an executive order. You're going to go do this, right? To exercise rulemaking in areas such as <clears throat> unfair data collection surveillance practices, uh, unfair anti-competitive restraint, third-party repair, self-repair, uh, unfair anti-competitive conflict agreement, prescription drugs, Unfair competition in major internet marketplaces, that's a big one. Unfair occupational licensing restrictions, big one. Unfair tying practices or exclusionary practices in the brokerage or listing of real estate. And any other unfair industry specific, substantial inhibit competition. So this is literally what the executive order tells Lena to do. We know that Lena and the staff at FTC. Right. So not the political appointees, but the staff attorneys at FTC and DOJ have been wanting to go after real estate for at least 10 years. We know that the DOJ walked away from the settlement that they had with NAR because they felt it wasn't going far enough. Because frankly, if we get down to it, the DOJ wanted to go after cooperation and compensation. Right. Okay. Lena hasn't been able to do anything because of the deadlock on the FTC. Right. And the specific opportunity is it went from three Republicans to, and three Democrats to four Democrats, two Republicans, right? You're right. When the House changes hands in November, because it's going to change if, hands. If, 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 it, if, dude, if, the red wave is real. It's going to change hands, right? Uh, okay. Right. You don't really? I mean, I'm, I'm not I'm quoting from Democrats when I say the red wave is coming, the House is going to change hands, right? Uh, well, it, I, I mean, don't, we'll say that 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 typically happens, you know, in, in a midterm in, anyway. Yeah, in a midterm typically. anyway. Yeah, yeah. I don't. So, I call yeah. that, you know, whatever. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. My point is, if that happens, when it happens, I don't know if it's really going to inhibit the FTC, right? Because that's still the legislature, you know, unless Congress is going to start passing laws, right? Uh, saying, you know what, it's totally fine you know, this so-called anti-competitive, we're going to legislate that into being okay. Like, they're still going to have a free hand until the end of her term. So unless Lena Khan gets removed from the FTC, and there's zero signs of that happening, I figure she's got three years or two and a half, right? She has this order with that we think the FTC is going to want to do. Now, having laid all that out, walk me through your logic of how <laughs> the status quo gets maintained. First of all, yeah, I mean, I think you put the wrong document up. The correct document that you just shared, you should have shared with the audience, would be the previous settlement that the NAR had reached with the DOJ, because I think that definitely uh, is going to go back on the table. 